that one of the aspects of driving that a lot of people have trouble with is parking. So today we're going to demonstrate to you reverse parking in a car park next to a car on the left or on the right and then we're going to demonstrate to you forward parking next to a car. With all of these exercises the idea is to learn how to do them and then just keep on practicing until you get good at them. Our friends at 21cc Broadcast Productions have been kind enough to provide a drone to allow us to show some overhead footage and that will help to illustrate exactly what's going on when you're doing forward and reverse parking. Now the three line method requires you to drive in a straight line up towards your chosen parking bay with your indicator on and then proceed a further three lines. You stop when the white line reaches a specific point on the passenger door and that's specific to you and your car. Now in this case we're parking on the near side of the car as we approach. We keep checking ahead regularly while we're counting the three lines and we stop when we see that third line on the designated point on the door. We then put the car in reverse, optionally you can turn the indicator off and then you have a good look over your right shoulder in your central mirror and over your left shoulder and then you start to move, turning the wheel sharply to full lock as you start moving. When you judge that the car is almost straight you very quickly turn the steering wheel one and a half turns and stop the car in the middle of the bay. Now some people have trouble trying to work out where to start counting from, so the easiest thing to do is just to remember that line 0 and line 1 are the lines that surround your chosen bay. Then just proceed up to line 3, stopping in the usual spot, put the car into reverse and turn the indicator off. Now just note that in some jurisdictions you do need to leave the indicator on, so you need to check that depending on where you are in the world. Now if you have stick-on parking mirrors on your side mirrors, it'll make life a lot easier for you because you'll be able to see the white lines next to you as you reverse in. Then get yourself straight and then continue into the bay until you feel that you're central. You can do that either by looking at your camera or just by general observation. If you're no good with numbers, you can always use the alphabet. So instead of 1, 2 and 3, it's A, B and C. And everything else is the same. Drive up to line C. So when you get to that line, everything else is the same. Put the car in reverse, have a good look around when you start moving, full lock. You'll get pretty close to that other car as you come in and you'll cut across the white line just a little bit if you're on the normal path, but that's okay. When you get straight, just straighten your front wheels up and continue into the bay. And you can use your camera at this point to work out whether you're far enough in. Otherwise, just use your general observation. Now, because the reverse park requires you to turn exactly 90 degrees, it's very important that on your approach, you keep a straight path. In this case we're going to park on the far side of the parked car, but everything's still the same. You just choose your bay and then count forward three lines. Now of course you'll be looking in all directions when you're reversing, but in this particular case you'll need to pay particular attention to the car that's already there next to you. All right, You'll need to look over your shoulder at that car as you get to about that point, just to make sure you're not going to hit it. And then everything else is the same. If you've got reversing sensors, they'll probably be going off when you get close to that car. And stopping in the usual spot. Now, how does the three-line method work? It requires the base to be the same width. And in this case, they're 2.4 metres or 8 feet apart. If your local parking areas don't have bays of 2.4 metres width, then it's not a problem. Just adjust your turning point to accommodate the width of your parking spaces. It's only a problem if they're an inconsistent width. But hopefully you won't go there on your driving test. So we alluded to it earlier, but how do you know when to stop when you're reversing into the parking bay? Well, the easy way is to glance at your camera. Or you could line up on the car next to you if it was facing the same way. Or you can glance out sideways and just stop when your shoulder reaches the halfway point of the white lines. At that point, you should be positioned centrally in the length of the bay. Now, what about reverse parking on the other side? It's a little bit different, but you're still coming up and you're indicating and you're driving past the bay and counting three lines. The difference is that this time you're looking directly out your driver's window. So in this particular car, you'll be stopping the car when your steering wheel is roughly in line with the third line. But because you're sitting a bit further back, it's a little bit difficult to tell. But you just need to practice and use your best judgment. If you've got those small circular parking mirrors or a reversing camera, then you can see what's going on very early and you'll be able to make any adjustments as you reverse into the bay. Again, using the method of the camera or just stopping when your shoulder gets halfway along the bay. Now the trick with forward parking is to give yourself a nice wide angle of approach. 
This will help to ensure that you're as straight as possible as you start to enter the bay. Now it's very difficult to keep the front corner of your car in the bay completely when you're driving in and that's compounded by the fact that you can't really see where the corner of your car is. So taking the widest and sharpest approach possible is important. So here's another example of that forward parking manoeuvre, this time just showing you what might happen if there was a car parked on both sides. So we need to have the, the widest approach possible coming in. This approach might not be quite wide enough and the front of the car is poking out of the bay slightly and you'd have a problem there if there was a car on that side. So unless you can get a really wide angle of approach, don't try and park between two cars. So in this case we're parking forwards with a car on the far side but nothing on the near side. So with practice you'll know when to turn. It's generally when you're positioned as the driver halfway between those two white lines on the previous bay. But as you can see it's pretty tight getting in there and then we have to sort of track along that white line and then straighten up to get ourselves central in the bay. Just look sideways you'll see when you're halfway along the line and then stop. Now that's pretty much it. If you like what you see uh, please subscribe to our channel and just let your friends know about it. We're not really into fancy graphics or musical scores, but we hope that that helps you in your quest to get your driver's license. There will be some subtle differences if you're driving a manual, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. Thanks for watching.